Please join me in welcoming Fahad Suja. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. Good morning. How are you guys doing? All right. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, a bit about weather, weather documentation today and uh, the role that OGRA is taking to try to support uh, you, the member municipalities, and trying to be compliant with the uh, minimum maintenance standards. So as you know from the minimum maintenance standards, section 3.1 uh, is called uh, weather monitoring. And it talks about how uh, during October to April, uh, during the winter season, you have to uh, document, or sorry, monitor weather once per shift or three times a calendar day. And when it comes to the summer months, you have to, it has to be done once per calendar day. But it's, it's really something that has to be done throughout the year, so it's not just uh, the weather monitoring, it's just not, not, not just for the winter season. So monitoring the weather is not really all that difficult, right? Um, but the issue comes when you have to prove that it was actually monitored. So um, what a number of municipalities do is that uh, they uh, take on a manual process where at a given time, so times are selected during the, throughout the day on when the forecast should be monitored. Um, and from there, somebody is assigned to go in and hop onto the favorite website uh, where they go in and try to take a snapshot of it in a digital copy like a PDF, or they print it and then uh, file it in a document. Am I too far ahead? Okay. Uh, they file it somewhere, uh, either digitally or as a physical copy, and then repeat the process all over again, right? So when uh, it, it's up to, if it's the winter season, then they're doing it three times a day. If it's summer, it's done once a day. But still, it's a tedious exercise, and um, although it's a very mundane task of just doing those little things, it, t it does cost about 75 to, uh, to 100 hours per municipality to do that task. Um, so this is where we at OGRA felt that something could be done. And this is where we um, created a brand new service for ground up, from ground up um, and called it the Weather Tracker, which is part of the Winter Web App ecosystem. Now, uh, the first time we talked about the Weather Tracker was back in 2017 OGRA conference. Um, and we wanted to make sure that it was very, very simple uh, to how to, from the municipal perspective on how to set the process up and start getting your forecasts. So uh, when it comes to the setup piece, uh, it's very simple. All you do is that it's a three-step process. Uh, you get in, oops. So you get in, uh, you see a map, uh, and it shows you all of the 400 plus weather stations that uh, we have curated from uh, IBM. Uh, so we purchase the data from them. We show you the weather locations, uh, the station locations. You select a weather location. Oh, sorry, station location. Uh, in the next step, uh, you simply select the time when you want the forecast to be delivered. MMS asks for three times a day, but we actually give you four uh, as an option. You can uh, reduce it down if you need to, but we suggest that we keep it at four. Uh, and finally, you select the staff uh, to whom the reports needs to go to. So all you need is their name and their email address, really. Um, and that's really it. So from the setup side, you're done. And from there, uh, we take care of the rest. The entire thing is automated. Um, we also have something called a smart red button. What happens is when you uh, receive your forecast in an email, it comes as, as a PDF file, and uh, there's a little red button in it, and every red button knows who the staff member, uh, which staff member is receiving the emails. So what happens is when the staff member clicks on the uh, red button, we take a snapshot of it, and in the online portal that every municipality that subscribes to the Weather Tracker has access to, um, you can simply go in into the reports history. You can select any date when, uh, in the past where the forecast was delivered, and you get to see all the forecasts that were delivered that day. There's a little eye icon. If you click on that, you can see exactly who the report was sent to, when was it sent, and when, was, when did that person read or did not read that report. So people love uh, this particular feature because now this has really changed the game. Uh, you can all of a sudden see how your uh, staff is interacting with the weather forecasts and also maybe create some best practices on if somebody is not reading as, uh, as, op as often. We officially released the weather tracker uh, in April of 2017. Um, really happy that by December of ten, uh, this, that same year, just a few months down, 15 municipalities that come on board. 
And if you fast forward that to December of last year, just about a month or so ago, uh, 33 municipalities have now gone, come on board. So within the, of about 23 months, we're, we're really happy with the, with the uptake that this has taken. Uh, out of the 33 municipalities, uh, 20, 220 plus uh, individual staff members receive these forecasts every day. Um, and I had to check this number multiple times, but we're spending, we're sending about 24,000 forecasts a month uh, during winter seasons now. This is phenomenal and we're really uh, thrilled with the kind of support that we've received. Um, this is what the weather forecast looks like. Uh, it's a four pager. Um, it's customized to your municipality. So you have the municipality name on top. It's just a, um, a name that we put on now, Town of Good Roads. Um, uh, you see the recent conditions. Uh, also, you see Environment Canada alerts. Um, when it exists, if it doesn't exist, it just says no alerts. And then you get into the actual data. So you get into the, uh, the time, the temperature, feels like, dew point, uh, the conditions with a bit of text and also an icon, uh, probability of precipitation, rain, snow, wind, cloud cover. Essentially, everything that you need to make sound decisions from that point onward, uh, everything is baked into that report. Now, this is what it used to look like before. Um, we went back to work last year to try to upgrade this to the next level. So this is already a game changer the way things were. Uh, but today, I'm really happy to show you what, what the changes are that we have made. Uh, first of all, we looked at the gap between the text, that, uh, between the rows. And we felt there was something that, you know, there was a little bit more space than necessary. So the, right off the bat, the first thing we did was reduce that, uh, that size down. So in case you're printing these reports down, um, out of the four pages, we would like to shrink it as much as possible without compromising the, the font size. So simply by reducing the, uh, the, the row heights, we were able to do a lot. I'll show you what happens there. Also, um, one of the things that we noticed was um, if you look at the rain and snow column, um, we used to have zeros along the column if there was nothing expected. So it was kind of difficult right now, I've highlighted where uh, the precipitation is actually shown, but it was, if you can imagine, it's difficult to go through four pages and try to not look for zeros. Um, so you had to kind of visually close off the zeros and just focus on where the, uh, uh, the, the events were happening or how much of it. So we did away with that, uh, removed the zeros, and now we have kind of uh, instead of zeros, we just have dashes, so all it, up, it clears up. Um, and also, you can clearly see where the precipitation is happening within a second of looking at the report. Also, by condensing that, that row height, we're able, able to take all the four uh, pages and actually condense into one. Uh, and this, again, is by not compromising the font size. So we just wanted to make sure it was still all legible. A lot of municipalities still, a lot of staff still reads uh, uh, these things on the phone, so you can all, always uh, pinch to zoom in and out on the phone. Um, but still, it's still very much legible uh, if you print it out. Now, with that, we had some more space left on the page. So what we did was create a new column. And in this one, we added new data that wasn't there before. Uh, we added uh, today's summary. So we give you a day and night detail. Um, also, we gave you some other metrics on the, the low and high for the day, um, liquid precipitation, snow precipitation, that sort of thing. Just a quick snapshot of what's uh, expected in the next 24 hours. And then we said, why not do yesterday's summary as well? So we did a quick summary on yesterday uh, just to give you that snapshot as well. So all of the four pages that you used to have before all condensed down really neatly into one single page. Uh, we're really happy that we were able to, do, uh, to bring that down to that sort of a level. We kind of surprised ourselves out there. Um, but uh, we weren't really done with this, right? So we've looked at that and said, OK, how, what else can we now do? Uh, this was just a cleanup exercise. So we added a new page. Um, and in this page, uh, we took the tabular form and gave it a graphical interface. So now you can, in, in, in addition to seeing hour by hour uh, from the uh, a table side on page one, you can see uh, the graphs on page two. In particular, the three graphs. Uh, the first graph is cloud cover. Uh, this kind of works like how clouds are. So if, if it's a cloudy day, the clouds start to come down. It gets a little muddier, a little darker. Um, so it goes from 0% at the top, 100% at the bottom. So it's graph one, cloud cover. Um, uh, graph two is a probability of precipitation. Doesn't need any explanation. Uh, the redder the graph gets, the higher the probability of the precipitation. 
Final graph is kind of, uh, it's a really neat one. It combines a lot of different things into one. So you have the air temperature, which is shown as the blue line if, it's, uh, where, if we have dipped down into the negatives. Uh, the line color automatically changes to red when you get into above zero. So I'm really hoping for those red lines to show up really soon. Um, also, um, there's a green line that shows the dew point. And in addition to that, we also show the, the bar graphs for snow and rain. So all of the stuff that's in, in the 48-hour forecast in table form, all that is now graphical. So even much, much more easier now to, uh, to look at that if you want to uh, see it from the visual side of things. Now this already, you know, we have half the size of what we began with, uh, and we've kind of doubled the value within uh, the report. But we are OGRA, so we weren't really done <laughs> at this point either. So we added a third page. And in this third page, so initially, all the stuff so far has been 48 hours, and which is, a, we know it's a critical period where, you know, it's something that, um, it's an actionable time frame where you know that weather may not change all too much in that period. Um, down, uh, further down the road, it does tend to change a little bit, but we feel it's important to have a, a little bit of an outlook into the future of what the weather is going to look like after 48 hours. Uh, and while most would probably give you five days or seven days, um, I'm happy to report that we were able to add 10 days of forecast uh, within that same, uh, same serve. So with that, now we have three pages. Uh, the last page is actually, the graphs are exactly the same way as they are for the 48 hours. So you see the, the air temperature, the dew point. Um, you see the little icons uh, uh, for every three hours to give you an idea what kind of uh, uh, temperature to expect without having to, having to go through like tons and tons of table uh, format. So with this one, we have now the strongest um, offering uh, of any weather service that's out there today. Um, and we, this is what we really intended out to build when we, when we uh, released the, the app in 2017. But it took us a little bit of time to understand uh, the whole process and make sure that, uh, but now we have a very, very solid product out there. If you compare that to the four pages, now there's no comparison, right? So you have, Initially, you had four pages that were really page one of the new report. Um, of course, uh, we don't do the data. Uh, we buy the data from IBM. Uh, so therefore, there is a pricing component to it, as you know. Um, the pricing component basically goes like there's three tiers. You have uh, basic, pro, and enterprise. Um, and in the basic tier, it goes for $249 a month, pro for $498 a month, and enterprise for $999 a month. And the whole difference between the three is basically the number of weather stations. So if you have uh, a climate where the weather doesn't change in your municipality all that much, the basic is perfectly fine for you. All the features are exactly the same. So in 249 a month, you get one weather station. Um, for the Pro at 498, it's three weather stations. And the Enterprise is seven, uh, seven weather stations of your choice. But that was the old pricing. Uh, with the new one, so you have, um, there's, there's you know, way more data uh, that we're offering now and we're purchasing uh, on your behalf. So I hope that it does warrant a bit of a price change. But again, we're OGRA, so we kept the price exactly the same as before. So no changes at all. Uh, if you sign on to the weather tracker before uh, at those prices, they continue to be the same. If you sign up from here onward, it's going to be the same as it was before, but just way more value, value than uh, ever before. Um, now, for the 33 municipalities that are already on board, we have already upgraded all of them. Um, a number of them have already started to use the forecast, and they love the, the, uh, the new layout. Um, really, really happy to be supporting them in this. Um, so in a nutshell, the, by, by introducing Weather Tracker, into the ecosystem, we understand, you know, we felt there was a need to do something about this. Um, uh, and the, uh, just the value that it provides to our members on a day-to-day -day basis and the, the positive feedback that we get is, um, is really, really f phenomenal. We're really happy um, and that we're able to provide uh, the service out to our membership. Now we do have um, um, a test drive option. So we have certain uh, licenses that we keep aside for about a 30 day trial. So if you're interested in uh, uh, t testing it out for your municipality, you don't have to take my word for it. Um, try it out for 30 days. If you don't like it, we, we'll never, never ask for anything. Just see if that works out for you. Uh, there's my email address, fahad.ogra.org. 
Uh, and with that, uh, my time is up, and I would like to thank you, and I hope you have the rest of the conference. Really great. Thank you. Thank you, Fahad. Nicely done. As a, as a roads manager, I would strongly recommend you take advantage of the app. Uh, it's nice to centralize all your uh, winter-related documentation, SOPs, routes, reports, everything in, in one place rather than have it scattered in binders and files all over your office. Again, Fahad, well done. Thank, thank you. you.